Hi, I'm Brian Smallwood. You may remember me from those safety videos like Fire, It's Hot, and What Were You Thinking? Today we're going to do a little video on sensitivity uh, checks and fit testing for respirators. Now, many people may have heard about Bitrax or uh, a saccharin flavored sort of tester, something where we're going to create um, a sense that someone could detect. But uh, many people say that when people are doing fit tests, they might get tired or impatient. And even if they smell the smell of banana, they might say, nah, nah, I don't smell it, just to move on. So today we're going to talk about the advantage of using an irritant smoke test. Now, um, real quick. Can you pause it for a sec? How do I pause it? Just hit the, just. Today we'll be using the VeriFit irritant smoke generators for respirator fit testing. They're made by Nextech, and you can see that it's an all-inclusive design, right? So this means that we don't have to worry about buying extra components for this to work, et cetera, et cetera. When we take a look, you can see that uh, the chemicals in place, there's a bellows and a little cap to keep that chemical contained and a series of warnings that you really want to pay attention to, okay? These warnings are serious. You definitely want to read the manual before you start using this equipment. Now, the thing about these generators is that the smoke that they put out is toxic, so you need to protect yourself in order to make this work. So they recommend using goggles. Remember that they're going to have to be goggles that could protect you from fume exposure. They also say that it's a skin irritant. So it's really important to protect your hands when you're using this as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some nitrile gloves, uh, but you can use whatever it is that you have available. Um, also, don't do this in any sort of confined space. Don't expose other people to it while it's going. And be ready when you're done to wash your hands, wash the PPE that's exposed to this, and perhaps most importantly, um, the clothes that are exposed, be sure to wash them. So uh, what we want to do before we do the actual respirator test is we want to make sure that there's going to be a reaction, oh, right? No. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our little generator and break it in the middle like that. You should hear a little crack. We're going to pull the black nozzle off the front, right, which will allow air to get in there. You want to take about five seconds. And you don't want to get too close. You don't want to aim it at the person while you're doing a sensitivity check. You just want to get it about three feet away and just sort of gently press until you start getting some smoke from there. So we had to shift a little bit just to make sure that we didn't have wind issues. But as you can see, as we pump, a little bit of smoke is coming out, right? So we're going to test to make sure that there's a reaction. And as you can see here, the irritant's starting to get near. Chicken wing at the nuclear. Oh, Whew. I'm a little shaky in the knees. Oh, yeah. Uh, so if it's the sensitivity check, uh, whew, sweet oxygen. Okay, the sens sensitivity check should elicit a reaction, and you can see that's a lot harder to hide. Oh god, my eyes are watering. Okay, so now. Give a person a second to breathe. Don't rush them. Give them a second. Ugh. Okay. So now that we know that it works, whew, we're gonna go ahead and take a little bit of a second to put on a respirator, and then we'll fit test with it. Oh, God. So now that I'm wearing the respirator, wearing a P100, it's really important to keep that level present. If I am fitted properly, there should be no air leak, and the exposure level shouldn't be there. Now, if there is a slight gap, and I try to power through and fake it, 
that shouldn't be something we see. Now, based on what I'm feeling, right, I have not... I'm pretty sure there's a little gap. We'll see. So here we go. We'll take a moment, right, so we start pressing. Right? We should be able to press near the mask. Right? We're not getting any of the exposure issues this time. So apparently there's no fit test issue. Now when you're doing one of these tests normally, you're going to go through all of the routines. Oh God, thank God I had a good leak or didn't have a seal, right? So that's how you can test whether or not your respirators fit in, whether or not they're going to get a good connection. 